Professor Dave and Chegg here. Now that we know what infrared spectroscopy is and what simple IR spectra depict, it's time to get more thorough and see how a wide variety of functional groups will show up on an IR spectrum. First, let's recall what we are looking at. The horizontal axis tells us the wave number, which is a way of expressing frequency in inverse centimeters. So all the different wavelengths of infrared light are represented at different places on the horizontal axis. And the vertical axis tells us the present transmittance at that wave number. If the transmittance is very high, almost all of that light got through, so almost none of it was absorbed by the sample. If the transmittance is very low, then very little of it got through, so most of it was absorbed by the sample. That is what we see with these peaks that dip down in a pronounced way. Wherever we see these peaks, we can be certain that the corresponding functional group is present in the molecule. There are peaks that we will see over and over again, so let's simply list what they are, give the associated wave numbers, and discuss other characteristics when necessary. For alkanes, an IR spectrum isn't too interesting, since all we have is the saturated CH stretch and the CC stretch. Most organic compounds have these bonds, so these peaks will show up almost all the time. For alkenes, we see stretches for the vinyl proton and the carbon-carbon double bond. There is also out-of-plane bending for the vinyl proton, which helps determine the substitution pattern. With alkynes, we get a stretch for the triple bond, and the intensity tells us whether this is terminal or internal. Then for aromatic compounds, we see aromatic CH stretching. There is also data for the carbon-carbon bonds in the ring itself. Moving on to functional groups with heteroatoms, there is the hydroxyl stretch. This is perhaps the easiest to spot of any functional group, as the peak will be very broad and rounded, which is due to hydrogen bonding. If you see this, and you can't miss it, there is a hydroxyl group present. Amines have an NH stretch that is easy to spot as well, as it is much sharper and less intense than the hydroxyl stretch. Carbonyl-containing compounds are also easy to spot, as the carbonyl stretch is unmistakably long and narrow. The precise position of this stretch will help us determine what kind of carbonyl it is, whether aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, amide, or otherwise. Once again, every functional group will have its own characteristic peak, and we can refer to a table like this to identify them. We will never have to memorize this information, but the characteristic shapes of some of the peaks will be easy to remember. All of this allows us to figure out which functional groups are on the molecule, as well as which functional groups are not on the molecule if their peaks are not present. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.